Hey folks, Glenn Taylor here at TaylorMade Productions in Caldwell, New Jersey. Uh, I want to speak to you about um, GuitarStorage.com and how they accommodate our massive collection of uh, upwards of 70 guitars, basses, banjos, sitars, and all sorts of uh, different instruments that we make available to our artists and clients so that they can achieve a, a wider uh, spectrum of sound. Um, We've been collecting for years and years. Some of the guitars go back to uh, the late 60s that we own. And um, some are collectible, some are just pieces of junk, but they, they have unique tonal characteristics that we like to offer to our clients to uh, enable them to achieve uh, just a wider array of uh, sonic possibilities. I also play guitar myself uh, in a band called The Coots, K-O-O-T-Z. You can find out more about them at uh, www t-h-e-k-o-o-t-z dot com but uh, as you'll see in some of the upcoming clips and uh, videos uh, and pictures um, all these guitars not only are pretty cool looking but uh, it's not just your run of the mill Stratocasters and Les Pauls uh, we have uh, band guitars, electric sitars uh, a multitude of 12 strings and uh, just some real oddball stuff and uh, we'd like to share that with you if you'd like some more information on the studio uh, you can reach us on the web at www.taylormadeprod.com and that's T-A-Y-L-O-R-M-A-D-E-P-R-O-D.com, taylormadeprod.com for more information. Uh, over here at the studio we offer uh, vintage analog gear such as 2 inch and half inch uh, analog recording as well as uh, the latest Pro Tools uh, software and digital performer for sequencing in MIDI. Uh, we also have an unbelievable collection of vintage AKG Neumann and uh, Gefell microphones, uh, some shores thrown in for good measure, and uh, pretty much can capture any kind of genre from rock and roll, pop, hip hop, uh, jazz, uh, opera. We've done it all. We also have a wonderful collection of vintage keyboards, including a Hammond organ and Leslie's, uh, Wurlitzer, Rhodes electric pianos, a concert grand Yamaha, seven foot uh, nine inches. So uh, check out our website again, and be sure to check out GuitarStorage.com, because without their product, we'd have a mess of guitars lying around all over the place. This model that we have here is a, uh, what is called um, a Resoelectric. It's made by National, uh, who are known for uh, making resonator guitars. And uh, what appealed to me about this guitar uh, is that you can mic it acoustically and get that nice resonator, snarky, snarly kind of sound. <clears throat> you can also plug it in. It has a humbucking pickup as well as um, a uh, internal pickup for the resonator. And you can actually mix them together. So uh, if you're doing anything that's bluesy or swampy, uh, even soundtrack work, I've used this a lot on uh, doing uh, scores for uh, films that need that kind of sound. This is a great instrument. Uh, I bought it from Mandolin Brothers uh, before they went away, unfortunately. And um, it's just a lovely, versatile instrument. Hi folks, Glenn Taylor here from TaylorMade Productions with yet another in our uh, unusual collection of instruments here. Uh, this is um, not an original, but a knockoff of a Coral Danny Electro electric sitar, which was used on a lot of hits uh, in the uh, 60s. You might remember um, the box tops, Cry Like a Baby. And um, it also has a set of sympathetic strings. Doesn't sound very sympathetic to me. But um, it's a, a very versatile instrument that it, it only works in certain spots. It's not the kind of guitar you would break out every day, but some of the old um, Motown uh, R&B stylistics kind of songs also used an electric guitar. It was a very uh, signature sound to the 60s. And uh, again, thanks to these wonderful uh, guitarstorage.com racks that we've uh, uh, acquired, uh, all of our instruments, upwards of 70 guitars, are available to our clients at a moment's notice and uh, it gives them a lot of color options sonically. So um, it's, uh, it's a wonderful uh, uh, add-on to have to make the guitars uh, available on, on short notice. And if we're gonna, you know, I don't have to rummage through a storage room <laughs> to find uh, just the right instrument. And uh, they're attractive as heck, too.
Hello folks, Glenn Taylor here from Taylor Made Productions in Caldwell, New Jersey. Um, we're here with the GuitarStorage.com folks going through uh, the uh, large collection of guitars we've amassed here over the years. Um, what I'm holding here is, it's not so special in that there are many Gibson SG standards floating around. Uh, this has a couple of good backstories to it. It's the oldest guitar I own. I worked all of the summer of 1970. Uh, playing gigs with my high school band to come up with the $300 that in 1970 bought this guitar with a hard shell case which is probably about 12 times as expensive uh, in uh, today's market but um, I've never let go of this guitar I love it it still is the most wonderful feeling guitar it just doesn't seem like a the new uh, the new guitars that are coming out can can have age uh, embedded I don't care about relicking I don't care about vintage it's not the same as something that really is, and this guitar has, it's totally unmodified except for uh, metal uh, bridge pieces. Uh, but uh, uh, one of the uh, interesting stories and why I almost felt bad for this guitar was uh, I was playing a show in uh, 1974 in Springfield, Massachusetts, and we were on risers. And um, at the time, we didn't have very good guitar stands. I could have used guitar storage back then because this was on a crummy little metal guitar stand that vibrated its way to the back of the riser and then this guitar fell 30 feet to an assumed death but luckily um, my, I, I was smart enough thanks to my mom to have insurance on all my instruments and uh, uh, went up to EU Wurlitzer Music in Boston where I was living at the time and said look this thing is probably a goner but is there anything you can do and what they did was they Took, because the guitar was in two pieces. The neck was, I'm looking at this thing from 30 feet above and there's, there's two pieces of my SG on the floor. And uh, they basically took the neck piece in here, they put two dowels in here, re-glued it. This guitar has never been more stable since those guys fixed it and uh, re refurbished it. So the guitar lives on along with its uh, colorful history and is still one of my favorite instruments. A funny thing just happened here, as I'm speaking with the good folks here, uh, Mike and Karen from GuitarStorage.com. I just took this Martin D2812 out of the case for the first time in probably six, seven months. And it's in tune. A testament to the way they made guitars in 1972. This, uh, now it's 2017, so I don't even want to do the math, but... This was my parents' high school graduation present to me, actually in 1971, a year before I graduated uh, Passaic High School in New Jersey. They uh, said, uh, we want to get you a guitar for graduation, and I was so in love with the sound of, you know, the singer-songwriter thing was starting, and 12 strings were just the thing. So um, I said, I'd love to get a Martin, and uh, they had just come out with this model because at the time, the only, I think they made a D1220, which only was a 12 fret. Uh, so the big step was they, they now made a 14 fret joint at the body uh, model, which is the D1228. And um, a, a very funny sto uh, story happened along with this because uh, after owning it for about six months, I really wasn't crazy. The action was a little bit high for me. So my dad and I decided to take a father-son trip and go to the Martin Guitar Company in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Uh, so on the way there, I got a speeding ticket. That wasn't very good. So I kind of was uh, feeling uh, quite bummed. But when we got there, we got the tour of the factory. We, it was just wonderful. I know they still give those tours. But the, uh, the oddball part of the story was we had to leave it there for them to um, get to it and adjust it. And, you know, the truss rods in these are embedded. So they have to take the whole neck apart just to adjust the truss rod and to lower the action. But long story short, about a week after we dropped the guitar off in Nazareth, United Parcel Service, UPS, goes on strike. So UPS is on strike, and my guitar, uh, I believe they had already shipped it. So my guitar is in limbo, sitting in some truck or some warehouse, and the strike lasted nine months. So it took nine months for me to get this thing back from the Martin factory, but I got to tell you, again, it's 2017, this was 1972 when uh, the repair was done, and uh, it sounds as sweet as ever. And it's going to be sitting right over there in my guitarstorage.com case. We're rolling. Yep. We're Glenn Taylor here from Taylor Made Productions in Caldwell, New Jersey. Now, um, we're showing off some exotic guitars here with the good folks from guitarstorage.com. Um, 
This is not an exotic piece, but it is a tool. And when you work in the studio, sometimes you say, I don't want to call a banjo player because i got to find one to do the session. So um, this little $200 special was uh, a great steal from a musician's friend. Uh, it's Rogue, which is their in-house brand. And basically, it's called a banjo guitar. It's a six-string guitar that's on the body of a banjo, so you can get the... way if you want to cheat a banjo track on an existing track you have you don't have to if it, as long as it's not really spotlighted I mean we can fake our way through a lot of things but um, it's a great little handy tool and uh, again if somebody says gee I wish I could put a banjo but I don't play it I play guitar I said I got the solution just go over here and use the banjo guitar howdy folks Glenn Taylor here once again from TaylorMade Productions in Caldwell New Jersey uh, with the folks here at GuitarStorage.com. Um, I guess it can be said that Howard Hughes had the Spruce Goose. It was uh, an over-the-top aircraft that he took out one time, it flew in the air, now it's a museum. It's not quite the same with this guitar, but uh, sometimes guys like to give themselves a little gift, especially when they get divorced. So this uh, guitar was sort of one of those presents to myself. This was back in 1996, and uh, at the time, I was absolutely head over heels in love with the John Fogarty record, Blue Moon Swamp. And uh, the guitars on the record are almost exclusively Telly and Strat. So I get this harebrained scheme. Maybe I can make this Frankensteinian guitar that has both in one guitar. So I called the Fender Custom Shop, and it definitely wasn't a cheap endeavor to, to do this, but... Uh, I just kind of wanted to pimp out on a guitar and have it be all the things that I was into, at least at the time. Um, and this is basically a Strato Telecaster that has five pickups. It's got the three EMGs that are uh, Strat pickups, and it has the Fender Noiseless uh, Telecaster pickups. And you can select between the two guitars with the switch here. And then there's all sorts of other options, such as a uh, six decibel boost for playing leads, which is built right into the guitar. There are uh, stereo outputs, so you can, you can record it left and right. Uh, there is a roller nut bridge as well as a roller bridge, uh, as well as a uh, standard Strat uh, whammy here. Um, Spruzel tuners that lock without having to get into like a Floyd Rose type of locking system. And uh, beautiful bird's eye maple on the back of the neck. Uh, it's really a wonderful piece. It's probably of more value to me than any guitar player because it's, it's a one of a kind. Um, I tried using it on a few gigs, and the reason I was making the metaphor to the Spruce Goose uh, is it's not really a great guitar for gigging because it's got too many options, and most of you folks out there who play live know that you, you don't have to think about it too much. You just don't have time to make it compute. So uh, this guitar has found a great home here in the studio because it's got such a rainbow of colors within it. So we can switch from Strat to Telly to anywhere in between. And uh, it's also active electronics, and uh, I think it looks cool, too. Hey, folks, Glenn Taylor here, yet again with another in our seemingly endless collection of quirky, kitschy, oddball guitars that also happen to sound good. Now, if you know your guitar history, you remember that in the uh, 60s, uh, Silvertone was the Sears in-house brand, and basically Harmony Guitars made guitars for Sears and marketed them under the Silvertone name. Uh, I remember those amplifier, uh, the, the guitar cases that had the amp built in, those were uh, one of the trademarks of uh, Silvertone uh, guitars. But uh, at you know, the back story is that Harmony was making all these guitars, and uh, unfortunately all those companies have gone away, but uh, fortuitously um, uh, Eastwood Guitars has emerged, and they are now making wonderful replicas of guitars from back in the day. Um, uh, contrastingly, uh, the uh, airline brand, which is probably uh, best known for uh, the white stripes they use one, but uh, airline was the Montgomery Ward House brand, akin to like Silvertone being for Sears. And um, if you notice one common thread with most of our electric guitars, they all have whammy bars on them, Bigsby's, and uh, it's just something I personally like uh, to have as an option. If I play a guitar without one, it's, it's a little bit weird, actually. Maybe they'll come out with an acoustic guitar with a whammy mm -hmm. bar. 
Um, but at any rate, uh, this is an Aeroline H78, and this is a knockoff on the three pickup Harmony guitar. And um, it's just a wonderful, fat sounding, um, you know, kind of Gretsch like kind of tone, very chimey. And I had a little rewiring done by my guitar man, uh, Tony Marcatelli in Colville, New Jersey, from Majestic Guitars. Uh, and uh, this thing is just a wonderful uh, and kind of loud looking. It's, I don't know if it's a turquoise sparkle, which is a little bit of a loud color, but uh, we love it. And again, looks great, sounds even better. Glenn Taylor here from Taylor Made Productions with the good folks here at guitarstorage.com. And um, going through our uh, massive collection of uh, oddball guitars, uh, this is one of our newer acquisitions, although it's based on one of the older guitar models that uh, would encompass our collection. Uh, the name Burns of London, just, just hearing that makes you think of the British Invasion. Now these guitars, this is a Burns of uh, North America, which has been licensed to uh, reissue the Burns of London guitars, even though it bears the Burns of London name. Um, a lot of the early skiffle bands and uh, British Invasion bands, this was a very big brand over in England, not so much in the States, but uh, the Shadows, the Searchers, the Honeycombs, as well as um, you know the Kinks and a lot of the early bands. Uh, one of the more notable users of a Burns uh, guitar is Brian May, except his father built his guitar out of an old fireplace, but he equipped it with all Burns parts. Uh, the Big Red Special is uh, what uh, Brian May's guitar is called. And uh, Burns even makes a replica model of that one of a kind now. So this is uh, a Burns of London a Bison, and they call it a Bison because it's got horns like a Bison. And uh, it has, again, a very different kind of sound. It's not a Gibson or a Fender sound. It's um, got the Dynasonic pickups, they call them. It's ugly as all get out, and it's got really cool knobs here and uh, two tone selectors so you can get an infinite combination of sounds and uh, just another one of the oddball uh, guitars that are neatly kept in our guitarstorage.com racks right over in the other room for clients to use at a moment's notice.